This week on Pain Time News, we look deeper into the story behind why Kosovo refugees fled their country, how the fighting began and how it ended. We meet with two different guest refugees with different stories and we discuss Kosovo's development. Hello everybody, my name is Cooper Davidson and welcome to Pain Time News. This week we have a pressing story going to on live now in Cote d'Ivoire, Africa. As you know, back in 1999, a war broke out causing hundreds of natives to flee the country. Although the war officially ended in 2005, only now are refugees finally returning. This war was caused when President Felix Hufe Boini resigned after 33 years in office. Due to his resignation, citizens were forced to deal with open, competitive elections. These arguments eventually led to violence and then war. Troops from north of the country launched the attacks in many cities, although most of the fighting was done in Abidjan. According to some of our reporters, thousands upon thousands of Ivorians who left are finally returning once again to their home country. We're going live now to a reporter on site, Katie. Thank you, Cooper. Hey guys, I'm Katie Corwell, here now in the devastating scenery that has occupied our beloved Côte d'Ivoire. Côte d'Ivoire was filled with wars and threats, forcing people to leave. As of now, we know that 93,738 people have already left to Liberia, where camps were being set up. To my right is Bagabuki Fagda a refugee who has suffered through this demoralizing disaster and is returning to his country. I lost my home. I have nowhere to go. I'm returning to my own country, my home. My, ch my children are scared and injured, possibly scarred for life. How many years has it been since you were last here? I don't even remember it anymore. We've been through so many difficult and hard times. How did you get to Liberia? It was hard. We we given some help by people at Liberia and some media organization that donated to us. Could you tell us a little more about this? My family got separated more times than I can remember. She found herself in the gate of police recent part of all this. I recall a particular incident where I feared for my son's life. He was he was shot and grazed his shoulder. Unfortunately, our family didn't have the money or resources to find and take him to hospital. With no other way of stopping the bleeding, we tied up the morning with a plant of fabric we managed to save. However, a few days later, we began to notice an infection building up. It got so bad that eventually he couldn't even find an energy to walk or talk anymore. But this time, we have a camp itself donated to actually have a, the surgery my son needed. Words could not express how thankful I was to these people. But my family and I, we thought he, he was going to die. I'm sorry, I can't handle this. As we can see, many refugees here are in great pain, not just from injuries they got along the way, but from the heartbreak and loss of their loved ones. We'll be reporting more on this story next week, but now, back to Cooper. Already, we can see how Cote d'Ivoire's corrupt government has impacted their citizens. Regrettably, the violence doesn't stop here. A post-election war started in 2010 that brought fighting to West Africa. Apparently, candidates Lauren Bagbo and Lassen Orca both got some reports. Because both thought they were winning candidate, when words said otherwise, threats were thrown at one another. In the weeks after the elections, there were many threats to the leaders and so to ten thousands of people fled to Liberia. By late March, around one million were displaced in Cote d'Ivoire. Kiki is here yet again for another on-site report with fellow refugee Crimson Carabo. This is Crimson Carabo, an Ivorian who was targeted by some for taking sides in this affair. He is here to help us visualize the unpleasant happenings that has been going on for the past two to four years. So, could you please explain a little bit about why you were forced to leave? Well, several years ago when the post-election war broke out, I decided to take the Salani Kotara side, seeing as how he was my acquaintance and all. However, during this time, I began to notice the increase of violent deficits he was getting and started to rethink it. 
if it was safe or not. By this time, it was unfortunately too late. I just, I started to get death threats, and it started to pile up at my door. I fled as soon as possible to the nearest refugee camp. I stayed over there for a month at my relatives, more than three years, before finally coming back here. Fortunately, the war had died down. So, what do you think about Cote d'Ivoire now that 9,736 people have returned? Clearly, Cote d'Ivoire has developed. We are now given the hope that we can return soon. Many people have returned, and with the help of the refugee camp, someday we can go home to them. Thanks, Trimson. That's all we have for today. Catch Paytime News on Channel 6 every Tuesday.